Ah, well, there's the fellow we've been talking about, Hermann von Helmholtz. And the Helmholtz coil is a, a setup of two coils of wire with uh, N turns that are separated by a distance of R which matches their radius. The end result of that is it produces a very nearly uniform magnetic field. So if you just had a single loop of N turns, then the magnetic field lines associated with that loop, there'd be a magnetic field line that points straight down the central axis. Then there's another magnetic field line that starts to curve. In fact, magnetic field lines, as you know, always form closed loops on themselves. So the magnetic field line comes around like this. And then there's another magnetic field line down here that wraps around and comes in. And another field line here that wraps around and here. Okay, so that's a very non-uniform field. When it comes to the Helmholtz coil, the two fields kind of reinforce one another, and you end up with a magnetic field line that's very nearly uniform in between the two. Maybe curves a little bit near the ends, but not much. All right. So let's review what we already know about loops of wire if you have a single loop of wire, in other words, n equals 1, then the magnetic field at the center is mu naught i over 2r, where r is the radius of the loop. Then in the previous lesson, we found if we take a loop of wire, turn it on its side, and present an x-axis, and so we project the point at the center at some distance down the x-axis, then the magnetic field at this point p is equal to mu naught i times r squared divided by 2 times the quantity x squared plus capital R squared to the 3 halves. Now let's just take a minute and see that these two agree with one another. So if I take the point P and I push it back to the center, then all I'm really saying is x equals 0. And so if we let x equals 0 in our second equation, then we would get b equals mu naught i r squared over 2 times, well, 0 plus r squared just gives me r squared. And r squared to the 3 halves power is the same thing as r cubed. And then you see it, right? r squared over r cubed, this would all just resolve back down to b equals mu naught i over 2 pi r. So, not bad. And then, um, what else can we add to this? We've got equation number one for a single loop. We've got equation number two for a single loop, but projecting the point away from the center. And then equation number three, if I wind the wire several times and say there's n turns or n windings or n loops, then b is just equal to that number n times mu naught i r squared over 2 times the quantity x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. Okay, so all we're left with is to figure out what's the magnetic field at the center of the Helmholtz coil. So if I have two coils, and the key to the Helmholtz coil is that the separation between the two matches the radius of either one, well then the magnetic field just adds up. The magnetic field from the first one creates a magnetic field that points to the right at the point in question, and then the second coil also has magnetic field lines down the central line pointing in the direction of positive x, and so its field adds at point P, and so the net magnetic field would be equal to 2 times n mu naught i r squared over 2 times the quantity x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And so we just get the 2 
uh, cancels out. So the magnetic field at the midpoint of a Helmholtz coil. Now, by the way, to say the magnetic field at the midpoint is really to say the magnetic field at just about all points in between the coils, because that's the key to the Helmholtz coil, is it creates a gosh darn near uniform field. So, magnetic field at the center of the Helmholtz coil is equal to n mu naught i r squared over the quantity, see what can I put in place of x. So the distance to the midpoint would be r over 2 because the spacing of the coils is the same as the radius of either coil. So when I replace x with r over 2, and don't forget that has to be squared, and I add that to r squared, and then all that goes to the 3 halves power. The magnetic field is equal to n mu naught i r squared over, let's see, r over 2 squared would give me r squared over 4. And if I had to add to that another r squared, that's the same as 4 over 4 r squared. So in the end I get 5 fourths r squared. And then all of that to the 3 halves power. So that's the same thing as n mu naught i r squared. And then 5 fourths to the 3 halves power. And r squared to the 3 halves power. But r squared to the 3 halves power is the same thing as r cubed. So I think we've got it. The magnetic field in the space between the coils of a Helmholtz coil is n mu naught i over 5 fourths to the 3 halves power times r.